Hello, I'm Candy, Daniel's older sister. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how it is to be the sibling of an addict. We were, I say we because I'm speaking of my husband, Eric, and I. We do have other siblings, three to be exact. But we're concerned about Daniel um, Odin. We would expect to get a phone call at any point that he had passed or something horrible had happened and we were constantly living in fear of that. Um, he stayed with us a couple of times during that period of his life. One of the times that he stayed with us, my daughter had fallen from a porch or from a trash can onto the concrete and bumped her head and I called 911 and Eric was on his way home from work. He had pulled over to let the ambulance by and when he realized that the ambulance was coming to our house and was at our house when he got there, he thought that Danny had OD'd at our house. That wasn't the case at that point. But you constantly live in fear of that because you, you just don't know what's going to happen. And there's such a high possibility of something like that happening. All it takes is once. And we, um, we also had a shining moment when... Danny decided to take our oldest, I think she must have been between 10 and 12 at the time, her allowance. Couldn't have been more than 20 bucks, but he took her allowance and she figured it out and we figured it out. And Later on, he paid it back. It was just one of those moments you just think, wow, that's, that's pretty bad to take your niece's allowance. He had just returned from a two-year stay at Delancey at that point. We had hoped that that was going to be it. But something told my husband and I that it just wasn't. And three days after he got back to San Diego, because Delancey is in New Mexico, and he was staying with us in Spring Valley, three days after that, he was using again. And that is the ugliest thing you have ever got to witness as a sister. Your brother comes and goes and comes and goes, and he comes home, and he sits down on the couch, and he's wobbling here with his head and wobbling there and then he's sitting up and then he's nodding this way and then he's nodding that way and that's just it was it was horrible it was horrible and and awful and he would he would just come and go and and it's scary because because you don't know it's like I said it takes that one time it's it's very very scary um I have my tissue clutched in my hand because just before we started filming I started thinking about it and it made me cry and when I think about it it makes me cry because we spent I think it was about 10 years where we didn't know if he was going to make it or not and that's that's one of the hardest things you have to go through as a sibling or as anybody that's loves an addict that you don't know if they're going to make it and you know that they have such potential and they're not using it and you know that they're stealing and they're stealing to support their habit and they end up in jail and that's another one of the things that I remember my sister and my mom and I would make a little group and get together and go down to the jail and visit Danny when there. We'd try to, you know, laugh and joke and, hey, Danny, how you doing? And <clears throat> But on the way home, it was silence. Because on the way there, you could laugh. We hadn't seen him behind the glass wall. But then on the way home, we all sat in silence. It was just, it was horrible. It was just an ugly thing to have to deal with. It's such a change now but it took a long time to get to now. And I was just thinking as well, my husband will also share some experiences with you of him taking care of Daniel the different times that he'd come and stay with us and <laughs> we'd let him shower <laughs> and sleep, pass out, doze. <laughs> I'm not really sure what you want to call it, but <laughs> he would be on our couch at different times. And it's funny, it makes me laugh, but it's... It's really not funny. It's just, I guess, a coping mechanism. One minute you're laughing and the next minute you're crying. <laughs> we went through just a lot with him. 
And now, you know, I can laugh because now, you know, he's sitting in front of me and he's clean and sober and, man, he looks really good now, but before it was, it was truly traumatizing, I mean, I must say, I mean, not that it, it ruined my life, but it was, it was horrible. I remember a lot of times I would just stop and cry and my husband would be like, what's the matter? What's wrong? And I would just be thinking of Danny and how I didn't know what he was doing and where he was at. And I just think of always in a ditch. I don't know about you, but when I, when I think of horrible things happening, someone's dead in a ditch. And my husband, having worked for the enemy and being an embalmer, he's picked up a lot of people dead in a ditch. And that was what I would think that, you know, my little brother's dead in a ditch. We have, I don't know, I kind of thought as we were growing up, and even now, you, you get a special connection with some of your siblings, and I have a special connection with Danny, and I would just get these feelings, and it wouldn't be long after that. I'd get a phone call, and he would be really, really needing something, and something would really, really have gone wrong. And, and so I would, I would always feel like I knew that. And my mom can tell you she has this plant that he gave her. Of course, so she calls it her Danny plant. And she would kind of go by how well Danny was doing by this plant. If the plant was doing good, Danny was okay. If the plant wasn't doing good, then Danny wasn't okay. And that was bad. And she'd call me, have you heard from Danny? Have you heard from Danny? My Danny plant's not doing good. And I'd be like, what? Your Danny plant's not doing good? <laughs> And that's what she would tell me. Her Danny plant was not doing good. And and then lo and behold, it'd be a couple of days later and I'd get a call from Danny. <laughs> so just the weirdest things that you use to rely on when you have to deal with this kind of thing. You know, a Danny plant, a certain feeling, whatever. Some things work better for others. But we hung on to anything we could and those phone calls were few and far between. But we usually waited for him to make sure that he was still with us, because day to day, we didn't know if he was.